I, I don't think uh, the LA series was any different for me than uh, the end of the series once we got uh, Detroit's attention or even Chicago's attention. I think it was a, a similar response lesson that unfortunately you got to go through. And I think uh, when we initiated, uh, especially from a checking standpoint, and uh, uh, we the San Jose series, I, I don't think that there was a collective response uh, from San Jose that they wanted. And so we kept initiating. And then when we did it against LA, there was a huge pushback. And then there was a fight for who was initiating and who was responding. And we ended up uh, responding more than we were initiating. And I think it was exactly the same as the series against Detroit or and Chicago. If you look at the Detroit series, we pushed like crazy. When we got their attention after winning a couple games at home, we got their attention. We went into, into Detroit. We pushed like crazy. And they came back with, with a huge response, and it put us in reactionary mode, and we stayed in reactionary mode for the next two visits in there. And then we did exactly the same thing against Chicago. Beat them and then beat them badly in a game, and they came back with a response that that put us on our heels, and uh, that's a lesson that you gotta, you can't talk about. You gotta go through, and I think the same thing from Los Angeles. They. I, I read uh, back on the I, I archive yesterday uh, the the uh, the articles from the LA San Jose series from a year before, and all of the things things that Los Angeles talked about that San Jose did to them are were ditto for us. They we they ended up initiating for more minutes uh, in a period than uh, than. Uh, LA did, and that's why San Jose won, and that's exactly what LA did to us. They learned their lesson, uh, and they they stayed on task for more minutes, and that was the small window that they were able to obtain against us. I, I don't look at sweep, no sweep. I don't look at any of that stuff. That's useless. They won four games, and they won four games because they initiated for more minutes during a period than we did and forced us into uh, response mode. and. When you're in response mode, you're reactionary, you take a poor penalty at times, you're on your heels, you don't create offense, and they did a better job. They they learned from their two years previous. Coach, how strong of this of a core is it that could that Oh, it's a you? really strong core. It's a good core. It's it's a res respectful, young, uh, vibrant uh Excited core. I mean, they. I'm, I'm sure if you talk to the players right now, they they'd like to start training camp in a week. I mean, they they're excited. It's a great core. It's a great group of young guys who want to get the information. They this don't have the knowledge. I mean, they don't have it yet. So you can't talk them through that stuff. They got to go through it. And so we've gone through it. Now it's on us to learn the lessons. But it's a great core. I mean, it's a it's a hungry. Uh, want to get better, uh, really improve, it's an exciting group to be around. I mean, it's like, uh, I think it's going to be a team that can hardly wait to get to training camp. It's going to be a team that can hardly wait to get to the rink. And I think they're going to see uh, a huge difference in some of the younger players who have learned lessons this year about what it takes to, to win in the National Hockey League. I, so it's a real good group. Army said there's going to be some changes, uh, you know, getting that experience. How important is that you keep as much of the team together as I I don't get into. Uh, I, this is the exact wrong time for coaches to get into management. Like it's the wrong time for us. I'm more. Who's ever back is back. I mean, he's got to do what he's got to do. There's. I understand the finances, but. I mean, the core group isn't going to change. Jr. There, there, there's a big part of this, and yeah, he's going to make changes. That's just the evolution of the National Hockey League. But uh, for me, it's more. The players that we do know coming back, that we know have contracts or are restricted free agents that you know are going to come back, those are the guys I'm focused on. And my job is to, like I said yesterday, my job is to make them 10% better. And now it starts in the off season. It starts with recognizing what happened and what happened to them individually and collectively so that we can get better. But I see a real chance for improvement, but only only if we understand the fact that we need to get 
10% better means your, your focus is on 120 points just to get 100. That's what's going to happen because it's going to be the first time for a lot of these players that they're going to play hockey with a target. It's not going to be, we're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. And so we're going to have to be even better than we were this year just to get close to 100 points to get in the playoffs to even get into this race. And I think the players are starting to understand that, that it's a different game when people are pointing it at you. And when you've won a division, you've made the playoffs, you've made the final eight, People, you get people's attention and people are focused on you. Who would you say made the most strides after you took over? Russell and Polar for me made great strides. Oshie made great strides. Obviously, the tandem for the number one thing was the tandem of Elliot and Halak. They were they were they had great chemistry. Um, you know, they 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 fed off of each other's practice and game energy and did a hell of a job. I think that's number one for me. They 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 did a they did a great job together. You talked about learning on the fly to run a tandem. Is that something you kind of look forward to doing next year? Well, it's, I think it's more a belief system that uh, what you're seeing actually happen. You know, you're, you're, you're seeing players, uh, you know, when one guy's level started to drop off at practice, you knew it would happen in the game, so then you put the other guy in. So I think we were able to read each other's energy level and then uh, knew which guy to put in accordingly. So we knew which guy was hot which guy was going well at practice, which guy was struggling with energy. And uh, so we we seem to put the right guy in at the right time all the time. Hopefully we can keep up that, that good balance. But obviously not having that tandem in the playoffs was a big factor. Yeah, it was. It was it was huge. I mean, it was, you know, it was a big uh, big issue. But what are you going to do? You know, you're, Yarrow's got long rehab ahead of him. And, uh, uh, you know, he's got a lot of work to do before he can get back on the ice. and. and Participate. That's just uh, the nature of our game. What is the you want the mind that Petro is able to come back and play with what he did and play at the level that he did? Uh, I'm not sure what's what's being discussed injury wise. What's being told to you, or I'm not. I don't want to get into what's been there, but you know, I think playing at this time of year, my attitude is: if you're in, you're in. Now you might be in at 60 percent or 70 percent, like a guy like Petro was. But you're still in the lineup. You know, the, the one guy for me was obviously Halak. I mean, he, that's unfortunate. But um, I, you know, I, I think that I've always felt there's certain players where 70% of the player is better than anybody you could put in. I think we proved that with Petro. You know, 70% of Petro was better than anybody that could play. Do you want the guys moving completely away from hockey right now, or do you recommend that they watch the playoffs? Of course. You know? um, I'm, I'm a big believer in once the meeting day is over, like today, like I think it's you get wrapped up and everybody gets excited about making changes for next year and then you find, oh, God, it's three months or four months. I think it's really important that once you get through today that you, uh, you pull back and do some thinking. And I think that, uh, you know, once we get through today and tomorrow, and, you know, this is a big week franchise-wise, obviously, with uh, with what the other news is on the ownership, so this is a big week for the franchise. And then I think once the, once this week's over, you just get away and pause and reflect and digest and take a break.